Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I begin with the space station contract. The first space station we need to launch into orbit, have space for four crew, but then send two crew to it and keep them there for 30 days. We have a few options here. We could go super cheaty with the Mark 1 crew cabin. Uh, that has a crew capacity of four actually, uh, but you know. Uh, if you guys want to do that, that's up to you. I mean, I, I, I don't have any problem with people cheating their way through a multi, uh, single player game, not a multiplayer game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but but we have the habitation module, which is also sort of cheaty. Uh, six tons, four crew capacity. I have made it expensive, though. The unlocked cost is 245000 and then the entry cost is 392000 I made... I adapted the ISS space station modules for the crew vessel back, and so we have a station node here, uh, which is the same as like Unity, and this has two crew capacity, 14 tons, so much heavier, uh, but the unlock cost is a little bit less than that, and uh, the entry cost and unlock cost are both less. So we also have a station airlock here, because that doesn't have an airlock, by the way. Uh, so the quest airlock. And this is about as expensive to unlock as that, but it's cheaper in the end. So we could combine these two to get four crew capacity, or we could just like have the pod be part of the four crew, but then they wouldn't read four crew immediately. So mm, yeah, probably we have to unlock both of these to make it work out. There's also a station supply module, but that only has a crew capacity of one. So that's probably not something we're going to need right now so it's gonna be really expensive if we do both of these um, so we could do the habitation module but maybe we should go for broke on this uh, let's see how much was it paying us I really need to upgrade something I think I'm going to upgrade the launch pad and then we, we're not gonna have that much money <laughs> uh, but crude lunar landing would give an advance, but it'll give us only four years to do it. I'm gonna pick up this orbital survey of Mars contract. That's probably a good thing to do. But we're not sending mystery goo yet, so I'll have to remember that on the next go around. I still have a Mars flyby contract thing here. I guess I should pick that up. I think that's probably a repeat. Some of them can be repeated two or three times. We've got some more money now, but not pad upgrade money. The Magic Orbital Science definitely seems like a good thing because it has its own contracts. Well, I think we'll try to do the legit version with the nice modules, even though it's going to cost more. At least the NASA docking system doesn't cost too much. Because we're going to need a lot of them for this pseudo-unity module. And I'm going to tuck them in a bit. I don't like that little stripe there. Oh, I thought I'd fix that bit. Hmm. The, the, the shadows... well, maybe I didn't. The thing is, the NASA model baked the shadows of the equipment modules on the Unity... Uh, no, sorry, on the quest module, so... They, uh they did that. <laughs> they can't be launched with those equipment modules. They wouldn't fit in the shell cargo bay. That is a long time to build this though. 22 tons. It seems like the station modules don't have their own controller which in the case of these probably makes sense. Uh, the Z1 truss would technically have the controller I guess if you want to think of it that way. But uh, we can just add a controller. It's got. We just gotta tuck it in there. And maybe we should add some RCS and stuff like that. Maybe we should have a more complete controller. We're gonna have to lighten this up because it's past our pad limit. I'll just underutilize. Uh, that axis is not the one I want the symmetry on. I'll have to review that. How did that happen? Bad rotation in Unity, I think. Oh, let's use a hollow one. Makes sense, they have to pass through, right? 
This tank sure carries a lot. That's seven tons. I don't think we want all of that. One problem is we don't have the greatest solar panels to slap on here. And the symmetry is weird, so we're going to have to put it on here first. These at least do tracking, I think. That's generous. Uh, one kilowatt for that size. I'm trying to think how visiting vessels will fit. Guess that will have to do. The controller has basic comms. Ah, uh, because they don't have a controller on it, I didn't give these uh, intrinsic power draw. I'll add a note to give them an intrinsic power draw. They should cost some power. Maybe I'll just give them a controller. It'll be simpler. That is a long, long build time. I'm really regretting not using the hitchhiker storage container. Well, decisions have been made. Okay, I just have to think about whether I'm missing anything here. I'm gonna underfuel the top tank though because then it'll start off with a better thrust to weight ratio and if one engine goes out then we'll be in better shape. Also this leans towards the first stage which has a lot more redundancy. Maybe I should just not try and keep the same launcher. It might be cheaper if I just make them smaller. Super stubby rocket. Okay. Fine. Alright, I'll build it. I'll build it in the main slot and have the others go in the secondary slots. At 660 days, that basically means we've got two chances at the first space station contract in the time that we have. Up the time estimates were for the first slot, so well, I'll put the Mars orbiters in the first slot now. Oh, that's science day from the surface of Mars. I missed that. I thought that was just from Mars. Well, that's fine too. That's 22 years. For the orbital survey, we need Mystery Goo orbital telescope and radio plasma wave scan. For this last one, I'll make sure it has those things. For Mystery Goo, we have uh, this container, Biology Experiment, that should work. This says Observe Mystery Goo. That says Observe Plants. Okay, maybe it's not Mystery Goo. I'm not, I don't know. Let's make sure the Mystery Goo is the Mystery Goo. I'll carry two, just so I don't have to mess with this too much. They're pretty light with Realism Overhaul. 0.015 tons. Goo edition. Okay, so are we ready to launch a whole bunch of Mars orbiters? Let us see how it goes. Not quite done here and it would get worse the further along we go. It is going into winter here. All right, SAS on, throttle is up and ignition. And launch. I'm not gonna belabor this, we've got five of them, so I'll try and make it quick. Of course, at any point things can go wrong, there is still some potential failures. As we are past the speed of sound and almost through max Q here. Okay, lots of G force. And out. Only one engine here, but it did light. Bearings. Making orbit just about at sunrise here. There's the sun. And that's good enough. 256 by 181. And let's see what we can do about the transfer to Mars. This stage still has enough in it for any normal transfer to Mars. Well, uh, it's somehow requiring every bit of it. Uh, well, maybe this is not the best time or the best longitude of ascending node or whatever. Um, but we can still do it, so it's fine. We weren't 
intending for this stage to hang out anyway, and technically it says we have enough. So that's not a problem. Of course, the burn time, that isn't the right burn time. Um, we only have a two minute stage. There's no way the burn time is 11 minutes. I don't know how it got that. I don't know why it thinks that. We do have boil off though. It's going, going away pretty quickly. I should slap some MLI layers. Technically, stages like this don't have MLI layers. They have the foam insulation, but we'll treat that as the same difference. So we're a little bit worse off now. Yeah, I might bring the other ones in and quickly slap the MLI layers on. But no, it isn't that far away, is it? Um, hold on a sec. I thought it was... Maybe I looked at it based on the burn time. Yeah, okay, we're too far away. That's why they need to have the right start burn thing. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, using the RCS to make some adjustments here. I'll probably add another goo satellite. Since we're going to edit them all to have MLI layers on the upper stage, I'll just change one so it also has goo. Alright, that looks like a mid-course correction to me. We have that special orbit to get into. But we want to start out close. Uh, well, it's pretty in line, well, at least a good start. And going the right way around. Okay, but if it turns out that that is a location that doesn't get good comms, we might go on to the other side. We'll see. This is going to be primarily a comm sat to help out with the real stuff. So, adding that alarm. Okay, so this is all set up. And I'll just spin it a little bit. And let's launch another one, but first I'll get the MLI layers on. Okay, here we are with mission number two. And I think I'll try and start a little bit earlier and see how that works out for us. Or maybe we can try a little bit later. Obviously, we had some radial to build in last time. So either we need to be earlier or later than the previous launch attempt. Um, I'll say eight degrees and we'll see that. I don't think I'll be lucky enough to make it later so that we're in daylight. I mean, that would be too lucky, right? Hmm. Well, let's try it anyway. <laughs> so I'll go later first and then I'll go earlier. This could be worse. Okay, about eight degrees. It's still dark, but it'll be, the sun will rise earlier. All right, so SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay, through the clouds. Keeping it a little tighter, I think, this time. And separation and ignition. And fairings. Well, certainly more light on the situation, but was this the right way to go? Okay, shut down, 172 by 168. And let's see. We've got 4,555 left this time. This was the right way around. We, it's costing less, so this is good. I don't know if we should go further or closer to daylight. We'll mess around with that, maybe. Uh, next time we'll go even closer to daylight and see if that helps but 4050 is not too bad it does have the side effect that we're arriving at mars later but you know if that's how it has to be is reading the correct burn time this time 
Maybe last time I was like adding in the RCS. I don't know. I don't think that's a very good policy. And ignition. It has reignited. Okay. All right. Let's cut it there. Let's see what we've got. Oh, we might actually have an encounter. <laughs> of course, it'd be good for us to be able to use the fuel right now. So I am going to try to plot something just to take advantage of what we've got with this stage before we get rid of it. No matter how inefficient it might be to do it from here, 533 is a lot. And I think we can do it just with the RCS on this stage. That's more or less the way it was for the other one. And we're going in the right direction, presumably. We'll have to see about comms when we get there. Okay, node. Okay, um, well, it's sensitive. So... Let's just separate, because we're going to have to do that anyway. And it'll be a really tiny mid-course correction, I guess. Pretty much in line with that blue thing. I'll take that, just 0.3 meters per second. Alright, so this one's on its way. No problems. Definitely recharging. Okay, next. All right, this is one of the goo ones, and so the probe is a little bit heavier and we have slightly less delta V, and I've decided to launch a little bit later, but it's still in the dark. Uh, so yeah, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition, and launch. We still haven't gotten all the data units on these engines. Technically, ignition rate, uh, ignition failure rate is 1.23. Nope. I see some light. Yes, dawn. Before even the first stage has run out this time. A little bit higher than last time. And staging. And fairings. All good. This one, I think, uh, still doesn't have the failure the test flight configuration. You can know that. Okay, 207 by 176 and a little bit less delta V left over for the transfer burn than we had last time because we we're a little bit higher up. And there's a little bit worse, not too bad. Uh, definitely should launch closer to what we did last time. Not a big deal though, the stage has more than enough anyway. Oh, time warped a little bit too aggressively. Ignition. Okay, and this time the orbit line did not come in. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, this one is fur long, probably right at the edge of viability as far as timing is concerned. Yeah, I'll just make this a mid-course correction. Okay, and... probably throw my plot just there off, but let me separate and do the sun thing. Well, we'll see how that ends up. Okay. All right, and it's got its alarm. So that's one of the goo ones. That's for the contract that... That's for this one. Conduct an orbital survey of Mars. So we've got all things for that. Okay, two more. We're not letting any of these go. They're going to help with communications for future missions as well. Okay, well, sorry for all the Mars probes, but we've got number four here and we're hopping to it. Throttle up, SAS is on. We're making sure to get these things done decisively this time. 
So, ignition. And launch. Just watch all of them somehow manage to fail. <laughs> but no, no, it can't happen. All right, through the thick of it, and we continue on. And staging. And fairings. All right, and shut down. 212 by 172. About 4,500 meters per second there. Not that we need all of it. Unless things have somehow changed substantially here. They have not. Mere 4,018. I mean, that, that could get less, but clearly we're not in the best sort of transfer window this time. All right, and ignition. Well, okay, it is there. It's doing that sort of thing, so just need a radial correction. We'll do that here. Make course correction will always be necessary because some things are too touchy. Okay, well, we better do that because the burn timer is saying that we've got a limited amount of time to do it. I think I'll do the rest with the payload. So, separation. Ah, uh, it's thrown us off. It lost the node. Okay, let me just tell it to point at the sun, and then I'll just get a mid-course adjustment in. Okay, that looks good to me. One meter per second correction at mid-course. Alarm added. Last one now. Oh, incidentally, the Kerbal Transfer Window, or the Transfer Window Planner, uh, ejection delta V for this transfer point was 4,237. So we're actually doing better than this plot on some of the, well, the three most recent launches. We're doing it in 4,050. All right, finally, last one. Here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Maybe it was whatever inclination I had in Transfer Window Planner that caused it to have extra Delta V cost. Alright, looking good through Max Q. Okay, and staging. And fairings. A little bit high this time. I didn't tilt down at the end of the first stage like I normally do. And shut down. 217 by 208. And 4,300 left, which again should be enough. And it is. This seems to be getting there earlier, 255 days. That's because we waited uh, extra time. This had more revamping to do because I added the goo containers. And ignition. Okay. Oh, 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 I just went. I just went. Okay, retrograde. Okay, that looks like something to fix in mid course correction, but first let us decouple. Okay, so that will be that. At long last, we have all five of them out. And we'll see how that goes. But there'll be mid-course corrections. Station 1, I don't know when exactly we can get that done. I want to pour a few more points into building it quicker. Let's see. Let's go back to Space Center. 489 days seems like a long time. Okay, definitely getting more upgrade points. 
Uh, it doesn't help that much. Um, we aren't even doing any tech, but that's because we need to upgrade the R&D building as well. I guess we should pick up a few more in the middle here. All right, yeah, advanced flight control, fine. There's those supersonic procedural wings. I haven't been using wing stuff, though. We'll get these engines. And we have enough for this aviation. We might as well at least do that. Or some better fairing pieces, maybe. Okay, but there you have it. Five launches for Mars. Serious Mars spam with these orbiters. And we'll see how that goes. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.